Welcome to FNP University. I'm SD, the NP, your guide in the vast and complex world of medical knowledge. I am excited to guide you through a crucial topic that every healthcare provider should master, building a differential diagnosis. So buckle up and let's dive in. First, let's define our terms. A differential diagnosis, or DDX for short, is a list of possible conditions that could be causing a patient's symptoms. Picture a detective's list of suspects. This is what we are building when we create a DDX. The goal is to build a list of the most likely causes of the patient's symptoms. These are urgent, life-threatening events like acute coronary syndrome, aortic dissection, sepsis, or other major events. The first step, step one, in creating a DDX is to gather information. This is mainly done through taking a patient's history and conducting a physical examination. It might surprise you, but these two steps alone are estimated to contribute to 80% of most diagnoses. Why? Because they give us the most direct and relevant information about what's happening with the patient. When taking a patient's history, we focus on their presenting complaint, what brought them in today, as well as past medical, family, and social history. Even the smallest detail could be a clue leading to the right diagnosis. That persistent cough might be due to a recent change in medication, or that stomach pain could be linked to a family history of gallstones. So you see how a single finding can change the entire treatment plan for your patient. Then comes the physical examination. This is where we gather more clues. The way a patient's skin feels, the sound of their heart or lungs, the size of their liver, all these details help us to piece together the puzzle of their condition. You can tell a lot about a patient by a simple handshake. Step two happens once we've gathered all this information. The goal is to categorize the patient's symptoms by systems such as respiratory, gastrointestinal, cardiac, or other organ system. Step three is to prioritize the possibilities. We start with the most likely diagnosis. Given what we know about the prevalence of different diseases and the patient's risk factors, but we also keep in mind the potential zebra diagnosis, those rare conditions that can sometimes surprise us. Step 4 involves further investigation. Now we have our list of possible diagnoses. We can use additional tests to gather more data. Serology, imaging studies, and specialist referrals can all play a role in helping us refine our DDX. Finally, step five, reassess and update your DDX as new information becomes available. Our initial DDX isn't set in stone, but rather it's a living, evolving entity that changes as we get more data. The severity of the symptoms as well as impact on quality of life can even change the diagnosis. This is especially true in realm of mental health where many diseases exist on a spectrum. Building a differential diagnosis is an art and a science, blending critical thinking, systematic evaluation, and a dash of medical intuition. If you found this guide valuable, give this video a like, share it with your peers, and don't forget to subscribe to FNP University for more insights and skills to help you excel in your practice. Thank you for joining me, SD the NP, here at FNP University. See you in our next video.